Hey guys, I'm Sam. That's my solar powered car, the Sun Eater. And this is a YouTube channel where we look at how to use batteries and solar to extend the life and range of old EVs. And another thing we're gonna be exploring with this channel is what happens to these old EVs when they get to the end of their lifespan. What can we use um, all their parts for? There are already a dozen other videos floating around out on YouTube on how to do battery swaps for a leaf why am I making this video today? Well, I'm making it for two reasons. Um, one is because there is a new feature with the Leaf Spy Pro app on your phone, um, which is just an app you can use to monitor everything going on inside your Leaf that just came out that has made these battery swaps, especially the 24 kilowatt hour ones, uh, ridiculously easy. You don't even need a can bridge anymore. And two is there's a few considerations uh, in these battery swaps that I've noticed missing from these other videos. Uh, that I wanted to make people aware of before they pursue their own battery swaps. These swaps are very simple. They can be done by one person with no prior experience in a day, and they don't involve cutting any wires or anything like that. It's pretty much just plug and unplug, bolt and unbolt. So let's go take a look at the first consideration I noticed when doing my swap that I haven't heard other people mention in videos on doing the battery swaps. Getting the car lifted, is pretty easy you just drive it up on the ramps jack up the back end of it put the stands under here and you want about i think it's 17 to 18 inches of clearance for you to be able to get the battery out of um, after it's up on the stands you remove the plastic undercarriage from underneath the battery or from underneath the car and then you've got your battery exposed to undo the the bolts that hold it in there um, you're Underneath the battery, there's an actual like, bullseye target where you're going to put the plate of your jack uh, to support it while you unbolt the battery. But the problem is, is that this battery slides out of a, like a hollow in the chassis that's designed to fit it almost exactly so there's no room for the battery to like play inside of there. But your, your jacks lower like that. They don't lower straight down. So as that jack lowers the battery and the battery can't move sideways, that contact point shifts a little bit. And by the time that battery is clear of the supporting kind of channel, um, you're normally a little off center on that bullseye. And the battery pack, both times I lowered them out of these cars, will pivot on that jack. And that's a problem because as all of the weight kind of gets focused on one point, it can deform the bottom plating of that pack. Um, I bent mine by as much as about eight to 10 millimeters. And there's parts inside that battery pack that are very rigid and not designed to move. So I'll put a picture in right here of what it looks like with that battery pack slanted as it comes out from underneath the car. And it's just really helpful if you can have a spotter on the other side of the car. So as you're lowering this battery pack out, he can be there with like a two by four or something to keep that battery level on that jack while you lower it down and pull it out from underneath the car. Uh, that was the first consideration I had. The second consideration that I don't hear a whole lot of people mention in these battery swap videos is that Nissan changed the rear mounting brackets on these cars when they changed out the tw all the 24 kilowatt hour batteries uh, through their warranty program. So if you get a new 24 kilowatt hour battery and the only thing that you get is the battery, uh, you're hosed. I'll put some pictures up here on screen right here so that you can see um, that they switched to two holes in these brackets when they did the battery swaps and you will have to have the new battery brackets in order to mount your new 24 kilowatt hour battery in your leaf. You'll have a very hard time uh, modifying the original brackets to accommodate the new battery design that has two threaded holes in those rear brackets instead of only one. Uh, just something to keep in mind, it would really suck for you to get your brand new 24 kilowatt hour battery and then have a really hard time installing it because you've only got the original brackets. The third and final thing I wanna talk about in this video today, because I don't think I've seen any other videos on YouTube about it yet, is the getting the car to recognize the new battery using the Leaf Spy Pro app, which blew my mind how simple this has become. You used to have to install a can bridge whenever you did one of these battery swaps 
um, to basically interrupt or modify the signals being sent to the, the vehicle's control computer, our control module, um, to lie to it about the serial number of the battery that had in it so it would think that it's its battery. Um, and installing all of this in the car was actually the easy part. The hard part was programming the CAN bridge with the, pro the code necessary to get the car to recognize a new language. I, I tried that for probably about two or three hours with help online from somebody who knew how to do it and I still couldn't figure out how to get that code properly written and uploaded onto the Cambridge. It's a pain in the butt. Um, but now, with the newest feature in the LeaseFly Pro app, you bolt the new battery to the underside of the car, turn the car on, it'll show the error code, you open up the app on your phone, and I'll show you, uh, we'll run a video of this after I describe the process. Open up the app on your phone, run a diagnostic, it'll ping, you know, hey, this is a uh, bad battery, and right there the app has a uh, run debug code little box and you type in the code for overriding that um, bad battery serial, serial number bug and the car is ready to roll with no error codes no warning lights lit up on the dash nothing I'll upload a video right here of me turning on the Sun Eater for the first time after we have the new battery in there and messing with uh, Leaf by Pro for a minute or two and trying to get it to work I didn't get uh, the actual insertion of the debug code on camera because it, it was a trying to hold the OBD2 sensor, learn all this stuff, hold the camera at the same time, I couldn't do it. But I'll insert some screenshots here that'll show you how the process works. So if you're doing a 24 hour kilowatt to 24 hour kilowatt hour battery swap, um, you will have all the steps you need. Okay, here's that video. Holy sh! Okay, now we've got that guy right there. I think that'll probably be the error code. So I finally get my OBD2 sensor plugged in just right. You'll notice we left the car up on blocks while we tried to get the battery to pair. That's because I wasn't 100% sure I was going to be able to pull this off and I wanted the car still lifted so I could put the old battery back in it if I couldn't figure this out. But it wound up being much simpler than I thought. So we plug in the OBD2, open Leaf Spy, and click on the button in the top right hand corner that looks like uh, three parallel lines. Next click on Settings and then check the box enable service screen shown here. If you back out of the settings menu now, you will go to the service menu. Okay, so we go to read DTC, probably some kind of diagnostic code. You can click on read DTCs right there and it will read all the code coming out of your leaf. Then you can go to um, save back out of there and go to clear DTCs and if you've got your battery uh, your bad battery serial number code there then you can select that and go to clear it and in, and type in that little code that I typed in uh, to over kind of override that bad battery serial number error message and get your all your lights uh, off on your dash there except for the ones that are supposed to be on so you won't have any error codes on the dash. You may be wondering where I got the override code from. Well here I have to give all the credit to Dalla and whoever the developer for Leaf Spy is. I paid about five dollars for Leaf Spy and three dollars a month to Dalla through Patreon and that's the magic of the YouTube community and the EV hobbyist community. You can get all the help and mentorship you need to accomplish these jobs and builds for hundreds to thousands of dollars less than a mechanic would charge you. I'm going to leave a link to Dalla's leaf battery swap video in the description of this video. It's a must watch if you are going to attempt to do your own battery upgrade or swap. I'm always very grateful for his input on my projects 
even when it's a uh, Sam, you really shouldn't do it that way. Okay, so that's the story of my 24 kilowatt hour battery swap um, and three considerations that I thought you guys, the viewers, should know if you're considering doing one. Um, the battery's tendency to skid off the jack, uh, the brackets that you have to have if you're doing a direct swap, and uh, the incredible ease that the latest version of Leaf Spy Pro uh, makes this battery swap happen with is incredible. But now we've got um, a donor vehicle and an old battery um, that we can't just throw away. That's too much crap to be thrown in a landfill. That's not really what we do around here. Um, well, I had a power window motor burn out on the driver's side of this car, so I've already pulled one part out of it. It turns out it's easier to just pull a door off one car and put it on an identical car than it is to actually go in there and take the motor out which is why you see the Sun Eater's old door on the black leaf over there. And then I went on the Facebook group, Nissan Leaf Owners USA, and posted that I've basically got a donor car that I'm trying to uh, recycle or upcycle every single piece of. So contact me if you need anything, headlights, taillights, wiper blade motors, power window motors, anything. Um, you pay for shipping and I'll give it all away. So hopefully we can upcycle pretty much every single piece of that car over there and none of it winds up in a landfill. Now, what about the old battery out of this car? Well, I've been talking for a while. My last episode was on fundamentals of um, large power walls, about how we're going to repurpose the old battery into home stationary storage. Um, it's been quite a project, but uh, it's going to be a pretty nice 60 volt system when it's all done. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on it today because I'm planning on doing a whole video on showing you guys how to take your old batteries out of your Nissan Leafs and turn them into stationary storage for your house. Um, but it's very fun to work on. I'm looking forward to doing that video. Um, thank you to all of my Patreon sponsors who have supported me during uh, the little hiatus from YouTube that I took there for a couple months. I'm getting back into it now. Um, so let's cut to an economy via the week. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Today's economy via the week is a 2017 red Chevy Bolt for $13,000. The mileage is a little high at $128,000, but these electric drivetrains last so long, you can probably easily get another 100,000 miles out of it. You can achieve a range of over 200 miles on a charge, so you can do pretty much everything but road trip in them. This is the cheapest EV for those looking for something with more range than a Leaf. The Bolt has been in the news lately because of a few vehicle fires they have had. I try and take these anecdotes seriously, while at the same time being mindful of how statistically likely a bolt, like this one, is to catch fire in my garage. So let's do some quick math. There have been 88,000 bolts sold as of March 2021. There have been 11 fires related to the bolt's battery. That means that you have a 1 in 8,000 chance of this car catching fire statistically. Furthermore, 7 of those 11 fires were in the 2019 model line, clearly the most problematic, this Economy V is a 2017. Call me reckless, but a 1 in 8,000 chance of a fire doesn't scare me enough to make me sell my Bolt, or to keep me from pointing out this one is a pretty good deal. Alright, that's all I got for today. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.